Okay, we're going to put the pistons on. I'm going to do one side because the other side is duplicated. These have a fresh 6450 bore and hone on them. They got Wiseco 6450 513 pistons, which go on the stock stroke, stock rod, stock crank here, OEM, Yamaha. The rings don't have any side up. Uh, they're not designated. You can go either way. I just like putting them with the numbers up so I can read them. Uh, just a habit that I've always done. Take your rings, put them in your bore, square them up with the piston, about an inch down or so. The directions on how to ring gap it are right here with every set of Wisco pistons. The ring gap on this bore, they say uh, about 0 0.04 thousandths gap for every inch. This is a two and a half inch bore. I usually gap them to 12. At least that's Wisco's ring sets. They always come out to about 12, always. Um, so checking it, it's good. Check both rings and um, like I said, on this 6450, they're usually about 12 thousandths. The rings always come out about the same. I can't remember the last time I've had to file for ring gap. Those rings are good. Take your piston. Put your wrist pin in. Circlet. And then I just take the opening of the sir clip and put it in the little eyelet there. And I just push it in. I use a little top of a flathead screwdriver. They're pretty small and they've been pretty easy. So I just get one side in. The side in I put in is the middle side of the motor because I don't like working from that direction. I like working from the side of the motor out. The wrist pin, brand new wrist pin bearing in there. Wisco wrist pin bearing. I just slide the wrist pin in. Get the motor turned so I can get the other circlip in the other side. Make sure the wrist pin it slid all the way over and you can't slide it out the other end and that circlip is seated. You don't want it falling out. It'll tear the cylinders up. And I do this side the same exact way. Just pop it right in. Make sure it's seated. Once the circlip I think is seated, I take the wrist pin and I try to shove it out the other side and it's good. Yeah, it's as easy as that. Now, Putting on the rings we just gapped. I just start at the dowel. There's a dowel here that centers the opening up to where they want it to be in the cylinder. And I just walk it around. This one walked around. I started in the, the, the bottom groove and it walked around and sat itself in the top groove. These are little things that happen when you're putting stuff together. Now don't back it out a ton because these rings are brittle and they will snap and you don't want to ruin a set of rings. There we go. Down you go to the opening. Then I take the other one, same thing. From the dowel pin, walk it around. There you go, one piston arrow always goes towards the exhaust. That's how you do it. Do both sides like that and you're all done. This angle is always hard to show, but once you got your pistons on and you just lay your base gasket down, you got to take the piston rings and line the opening up with the dowel pins there in the piston groove where the ring rides and you pinch them. You take them and you pinch both the upper and lower rings at the same time. And then you slide this over, slide the cylinder right on. So I'm gonna pinch the rings 
get them lined up, pinch, and don't force it. If it doesn't feel right, the rings are binding. Just like that. Then we've got eight 12 millimeter nuts to put on, right? On all the corners. The hard ones being in here. They're easy with the stock cylinders. Wait until you get a mono block or something and have to get in there. It gets tricky, but they all fit. A lot of questions I get are, what port job do I have? And they send me a picture of the intake. Nobody can tell what port job you have by sending pictures. You just can't do it. One, there's no industry standard. People can port however they want to and give it any name they want to. So one person's dune port is not another person's dune port. One person's trail port is not another person's trail port. Drag port, all of them, any kind of name. My MX Hardcore Trail, I guarantee nobody has an MX card Hardcore Trail port that matches mine. I don't even know if anybody has an MX Hardcore Trail port like mine. It's just a name. You make up a design, you give it a name. That's it. Now we can explain where the power comes in, signs on, signs off. That's what you're concerned with. And that's what I sell. So you tell me how much horsepower you want, you tell me in what RPM range, and we do the best we can with the limitations of the motor. Now here, I'm gonna show you how to degree in your motor. You can do this on any motor. Any motor, any two-stroke, single, or uh, the Banshee uh, twin. Uh, and, and you can tell yourself what kind of port job you got. Well, call it what you want. It doesn't matter. It's just port timing. Port timing's how long each window is open. You put it all together. So it gets really complicated. You can get really detailed. But I'm going to give you just basics. What port job do you have? I don't know. You can send pictures, it doesn't matter. You can even send them to me and I can roughly tell you about what it is compared to what my names are, but it's all a wash. Okay, let's get on to porting. First of all, these cylinders are ported. This is uh, my dune port on this motor. I forgot to show you as I was assembling it, but um, standard porting by me. First thing you're going to need when you want to degree in your cylinder or see where your cylinder comes in when you degree it is a degree wheel. You buy this at Summit Racing or any other hot rod uh, shop. They're all online now, I believe, but you can probably still walk into an AutoZone or something and pick one of these up. The old degree wheel. This is for degreeing in cams on four strokes, right? You've got your old Chevy, small block, your Ford, your Mopar, your Poncho, any of those, this works. You just need to find which center to use on the snout. So I'll come over here. And you can see I already have a piece of wire here. You need a stiff wire that doesn't move. Uh, I think this is a piece of bailing wire. I've got my center that I always use because it fits on the back. She cranks and, and centers it. A lot of these won't fit. They're for different sizes. Bind your size. Got to take your flywheel off, of course. And that centers it. Now, when you roll it up through the stroke, it spins. And all these are numbers and those are the degrees. 
So let's start. Let's see if I can get a good view of this. This is gonna be difficult, but you'll get how to do it. First, I will get the piston where I want it to be. Um, we're gonna degree in this exhaust right here. So what is my exhaust in degrees? We're gonna close the exhaust off. Say that's the top of the exhaust port. Top of the exhaust port. So I'm gonna get this lined up at top dead center, top dead center of the exhaust. And then I'm gonna rotate that exhaust all the way through, open and back closed, okay? And then we're gonna see where it ends up. Okay, so we started down here, we ended up here, and it looks like the exhaust is about 196 degrees. 196 degrees on the exhaust, open to close. That is exhaust duration on how long it's open. So when they say, what do you, what's your port job? What's your degrees? 196 on the exhaust and we will check the transfers now. I set the transfers up with the bust all at the same height so they should all close at the same time. And then we have to do the same thing. Come around here put it at top dead center and then we rotate we go down and back up okay we started here Looks like we have about 129 on the exhaust port. That's where this motor degrees in. 196 exhaust, 129 transfer. 129, yeah, 128 and a half. No, that's in a nutshell you can do that on any motor get yourself a degree wheel and do the same thing then write the numbers down that's a better ammo to go to any builder than it is trying to shoot over pictures and go oh, what's the sport job